I'm Mike Yuyak. I love to try new things, and I've had culinary adventures all around the world, as well as right at home. I've had really wonderful food, as well as some really horrible food. I'd like to share some of my adventures with you, and we'll see if I have what it takes to fix whatever goes wrong. This is Recipe Redemption. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Recipe Redemption. Today I found myself in need of a good stiff drink. Uh, you can tell by the shirt. It's the same day that I recorded the last of the Sir Streaming video, so please reference that, why I need a stiff drink. Well, I ran across this recipe online that uh, I gotta try. It's a beef tingler. There are just so many jokes. So many jokes. And in case you think I'm making this up, here's the recipe. Oh yeah, this is a thing. So, I have here some beef broth. I didn't use the condensed beef broth that I then de-condensed? Anyway, um, diluted with water. I just use beef broth. Uh, a little bit of sherry in here. Heat it up. Not to boiling, just so it's warm. That's all you want. It doesn't have to be hot. I have here whipping cream. It's a little bit of nutmeg. Um, what was it called? Vanilla extract. Wow. The mind is the second thing to go. Um, yeah, whipping cream, nutmeg, vanilla extract, whipped in, and then folded in some orange rind. And yes, it just says to dollop a little on top. Now, if that don't look good, I don't know. I kind of want to stir that in, but that kind of makes chunks. That may have been a poor choice, but we'll find out. Beef tingler. Hmm. My inner 12 year old is delighted. Anyway, smells beefy. Uh, yeah. The orange definitely is expressed in this. This sort of unexpected creaminess. I mean, obviously it's expected, but not something that you sort of expect in relation to beef. And we'll see if the alcohol is even, even detectable in here. It's certainly not on the nose. There's very little um, per serving. There's probably eighth of a teaspoon. As a cocktail, that's kind of unsatisfying. Um, you get the beefiness up front. The alcohol is sort of a lingering aftertaste more than anything else. Um, I think the the flavor of the beef really kind of covers up any anything that you would get from the alcohol. Um, the globs of, of whipping cream are not entirely pleasant. Yeah, this comes off as kind of sour. Um, not in a good way. But the, the orange, um, the orange zest is expressed uh, quite strongly. Um, it hits you right after the beef does. Yeah, not a very satisfying cocktail beverage. 
That's really what it is. I mean, once you've added alcohol to it, it becomes a cocktail. Um, we've already done a beverage based on beef broth. That being the beef fizz, which was also unsatisfying. But <clears throat> I have something that I think might work. Give me a second. <clears throat> so let's try this a different way. I have a shaker. And I have mystery ingredient number one. Now, during the aforementioned Sir Strumming and Hakarl video, um, I also tried some Brinovit along with the Hakarl, which is um, a caraway flavored uh, spirit, um, also known as Aquavit. And so I decided to make my own. And at the same time, I got some uh, sun-dried tomatoes and put them in vodka. So, my thought, something that tastes like caraway really got me to thinking about a Reuben sandwich. So what would it take to make a cocktail that tastes like a Reuben sandwich? Well, beef broth. Couple ounces of beef broth. <clears throat> Sprained my wrist today, so this is super fun. Okay, I am going to attempt to pour a measure of my homemade aquavit or homemade brinovit. Splash all over myself so I smell like a brewery. Great. Here is my sun-dried tomato. I'm going to do about a half measure of this, if I can. Sort of. Some of it will actually end up in the shaker. Yeah, there's a lot of forethought to this. Now, Reuben Sandwich has sauerkraut. I have the sauerkraut brine. Now, the other benefit of using this beef broth versus the beef concentrate is that it's not too salty. This is actually, actually, it's a low sodium version of it, now that I think of it. Okay, so, caraway seed gives us the sort of rye bread flavor. Uh, beef broth, obviously, the corned beef. Um, the uh, sun-dried tomato, I'm hoping, gives us the tomato component of the Thousand Island dressing. Um, and egg. I'm using whole egg. Now, typically you add sort of creaminess, uh, a, a sort of uh, creamier mouthfeel by using egg white. I'm using whole egg because I think that the egg yolk in there will give it a little richness. Make sure those yolks are actually broken. It'll give us a little bit of richness that will help to simulate the mayonnaise in the Thousand Island dressing. And kind of mm, sort of sub in for any cheese that you might throw onto a Reuben sandwich. So. Shake a full of ice. Oh, I actually should have dry shaken. Oh, I should be okay. My shaker has a strainer in it. You probably should actually double strain this. Comes out an interesting peach color and I am garnishing with onion and olive. Should be on the corner. Whatever. Anyway, I'm going to call this a Reuben Sour. Now, 
needs work. It's not the worst thing. Um, it's not the best thing. It's still, you know, it is, oh, there it is. The caraway finally comes through. It actually is not as strong as I thought it was going to be. I, I tasted it earlier and I thought it was going to be fine, but um, I let this go for two weeks in the fridge. Might have needed longer. Um, might have needed to actually crack them, crush them up, and get them to release their oils a little bit more. Same way, th same thing with the tomato. I don't really taste the tomato much. Um, there's a little bit of color in there, but not a whole lot. The egg certainly does add a certain creaminess to it. I think a little bit of sweetness because, uh, you know, the Thousand Island dressing has a bit of sweetness to it because it's really ketchup. It's not just tomato. It's actually ketchup. That's the base of Thousand Island dressing. Um, so I think actually a little bit of simple syrup added to this would, uh, would greatly improve it. But it's not bad. It is definitely sour. It is definitely beefy. But it's not bad. I think some tinkering is in store here. But, uh, yeah, I, I would, uh, I think this, once it's perfected, it'll be a drinkable drink. Okay, we're going to try this again. Uh, there were some things missing from the first iteration of the Reuben cocktail. Um, the uh, tomato liqueur that I came up with or the tomato gin, I guess you'd call it, um, just didn't pack the tomato punch that I wanted. Uh, I think the homemade aquavit was okay, but uh, I think it needed a little something, and it was bitter. There were too many bitter uh, components to it without something to balance it out. So we're going to try this again. First, starting off... And I didn't learn anything from the last time. I'm still measuring straight out of the jar here. I'm going to go with an ounce and a half of my homemade... Ooh, whew, that's exciting. Aqua Deep. <clears throat> I'm still going to use the tomato gin, but only because it's additional alcohol. <laughs> Uh, I'm going with an ounce of that. Now to amp up the tomato flavor, which is actually kind of important. The Thousand Island dressing on a Reuben sandwich really does add something. I'm also going to put an ounce of tomato juice in with it. Now I have combined beef broth with a simple syrup. That's going to add a little bit more sweetness to this. Uh, I'm going to, whoops, go with an ounce of that combination. In we go. Okay. Now, the same richness comes from an egg. And lest we forget the sauerkraut brine. I'm only putting about, yeah three quarters of a teaspoon in. Um, I think that was contributing to the sort of sourness. The other thing that I want to do with this is dry shake it. No ice in this. I want to make sure that the ice doesn't get in the way. Because I've discovered that uh, if you don't, if you have ice in this, that your egg may not, you know, mix in properly. So, dry shake first. Here's the Ah, that's much better. Now add ice. Shake with ice. Find yourself a comically large martini glass, because why not? And strain into the glass. Now it still has that sort of peach appearance to it. And garnish with olive and onion.
because like you do. Ta-da! The Reuben Martini. Hmm, that's better. The caraway definitely is a lot stronger for having sat for another month. Still could use some sweetness to it, but this is a lot more balanced with the simple syrup in there. The tomato juice does amp up the tomato flavor, so there is more of a Thousand Island flavor to this. Beef gets a little lost, might be, might still need a little bit more. I knew that wasn't going to balance for long. <clears throat> lost my onion and olive, but not bad. Still not going to uh, make this on the regular because it needs a little work and it is a little odd. But it's a worthy experiment. What do you think? Would you try this? And what do you think you would do differently to make a Reuben Martini? Let me know in the comments below. And I'd like to thank you for watching. I'll see you next time on Recipe Redemption.